um, and I know I'm running out of time, we also started to mismanage our revenue sources. A lot of people forget that Ghana primarily is still a tri-commodity economy. Uh, until about um, 1995, cocoa, provided maybe 80% of all the external income we made. And then, since then, we've seen significant structural changes to the economy, but it's still in the commodity sector. It's primarily gold, oil, and cocoa now. Now, let me very quickly run through why I think that in those segments, which are major revenue drivers, we are doing everything we can not to be able to make the right revenue. In the area of gold, all of everybody who studies that sector knows that the real challenges we have is not in the royalties. The royalties are short. Whether the companies make profit or not, they pay us the royalties. The real problem we have is that we have 10% equity in some of these companies, uh, and they don't pay any tax because, uh, any um, dividend because they claim they are not making profit. We are supposed to get maybe 25% to 35% or something like that in total tax take. Most of them continue to insist that they don't make profit, so we don't make money. If you want to reform that sector, is it the 45% you are not getting, the potential 45% you are not getting, or the 5% that you are consistently promised, assured of getting, that you need to go securitize and put on the international market and sell. Which one should you do? And then we decide rather that rather than tackle the equity, uh, the equity issue uh, and the equity dividend issue and the tax issue in the sector, we rather take the royalties and go and securitize them in London and sell. Now that problem is evidence of why we now have this situation we have in gold, where every time we try to fix illegal mining, gold production drops significantly as it did last year. Take oil. We, we know we have to attract investment into the space because one of the challenges we are having is that investors are not bringing in enough money to do exploration and you know, find more oil. And that is why the 1 million barrels of oil a day we told the IMF will be hitting around 2023. We are now on course to actually hit not uh, just a little above 15% of that. The part of the reason is that the investment is not flowing because of our conduct. We look at this issue that we, we have in the uh, Westgate, uh, Westgate three points area and the OCTP issue between any Vitol, ENI Vitol and, uh, and Springfield, where someone has spent $6 billion, the largest single investment in the oil sector, discovered a large oil field. Somebody next door has not even finished doing appraisal for us to know how much oil is there. You say they should combine the two fields and give the other party, uh, because it's a Ghanaian, 55%. You know, and no matter what they say, no matter the data they show, no matter the analysis you say, you refuse to engage with the analysis until they go to the international uh, arbitration um, space. And now that has led to a situation where a lot of other investors, when they speak to us in the think tanks, in the civil society research movement, they find you find that they tell you, is, you know, constantly that they have challenges with the way with the, the sector is being managed. And then we have some issues also in cocoa, where all of a sudden cocoa is not a loss driver for Ghana. So this is an area where we used to make some net gains in Forex. Now, when you look carefully at the cocoa sector, it looks as if um, given the debt that Cocoa board is, is, is piling, it's an ability to meet some of its international commitments, etc. Cocoa is actually becoming a loss driver. These are heavy problems. 